With over 4,000 hours across 14 years, there are still 73 out of Team Fortress 2's 520 achievements that I haven't achieved. Yet. How many of those can we get in just 24 hours? And can we even get the hardest achievement in all of Team Fortress 2 whilst we're here? Let's find out. Starting now. Holy shit. I just got my first new achievement in literally years. And it was in our very first life of this challenge. This was going to be easy. Whoever said this was going to be easy is an amateur and a fool. Firstly, that opening achievement was only so simple because I already had 9 out of the 10 required no scope classic headshots to earn it. Secondly, even though the other two classic achievements that I still had outstanding could technically be done in one life or one round, that doesn't really matter if you suck. Thirdly, my ingenious plan to tackle 10 whole achievements simultaneously as engineer on Doomsday was slightly held back by the fact that I could not get a match on Doomsday. There wasn't a single game available on this map in the entire world. Over 30 minutes in matchmaking and zero players across all community servers. Nothing. And fourthly, my attempt to try and get some of the initially planned Doomsday achievements in pastime instead was thwarted by the fact that the Jack doesn't count as the Intelligence and the destroy a sentry gun with your wrangled sentry gun achievement was apparently bugged. So even though I definitely did the requirements successfully, it didn't bloody count. At this point, I had wasted over six hours on dead ends and misfortune. I was genuinely starting to worry that out of the 73 possible achievements, I was going to end this challenge having successfully obtained a grand total of one. So I decided to go back to the warring board, the love and warring board. Part of the reason that I got that classic achievement so easily earlier is because I have almost never used the love and war weapons. I mean, they only came out like three months ago or something. At least that's how it feels. Okay, obviously it was actually like a year or two or whatever. June 2014, what the fu- <sighs> Anyway, all I need is just three kills and a single parachute jump to simultaneously bag two achievements and triple my running total for this challenge. Gentlemen, let's fly. Guardian Angel. This completely hatless medic came out of literally nowhere and saw fit to bless me with his crits at the precise moment that this clueless pair of enemies joined their soon to be smithereens teammate on the cart. Together, turning this otherwise wet fart of a jump into a 300% damage destruction derby dump like this metaphorical toilet had never seen before. With two more achievements on the board, now was as good a time as any to check back in on Doomsday where, remember, there were still potentially 10 more achievements realistically on offer. I wondered, poopy as a Joe, that floats on, oh, battlements, when all at once I saw a mode, a host of unearned achievements. Buildings of grey, fields of green. It was time to play man this machine. <laughs> Unbelievable. Legitimately hard to believe. We just got 12 achievements in roughly 6 hours of gameplay. 10 of which came in just the first 2.5 hours. That is unheard of for an account as old and as tenured as mine. But it certainly wasn't without its drama. Now, I'm a consumables averse kind of guy. Like, in an RPG I will find myself not wanting to use one of my thousand stockpiled health potions during the final boss fight just in case I might need them some other more important time. 
So it's because of that mentality that I had none of the MVM Canteen achievements, which were ultimately pretty easy to get, except one. I just couldn't see a path to killing 15 robots with a single uber canteen. But, in the words of Conjuring Condiment, then this happened. Not only did I definitely not kill 15 robots here, and not only was this a crit boost canteen and not an uber one, but this wasn't even my canteen. Seriously, what the hell just happened? We haven't done any requirement for this achievement, and we just got it. I'm not superstitious, but at this point, I'm starting to believe that maybe a medic-embodied guardian angel really was watching over me today. And just to drive home the point of how crazy this was, I was not actively attempting to get this achievement at this moment. This just happened completely organically. As in, I would have got this achievement right here, right now, regardless of attempting this challenge. By some unimaginable coincidence, I just so happened to get my first naturally accidental achievement in literally years, and it happened somehow, smack bang in the middle of this challenge. What are the chances? Seriously. And if you can believe it, I wasn't even the only one. Whilst working towards a couple of other achievements, suddenly I get the pop-up for push 10 robots into the grinder on Manhattan as a team. Now, not only had I queued all missions, so even ending up on Manhattan was just luck and not judgement, but I didn't personally knock a single robot into the pit myself. In fact, it was all this guy, and he didn't even get the achievement! He already had it! By some unbelievable coincidence, we had ended up on the right map with a guy who kindly chose to pit 10 robots even though he didn't need to, and it happened today, whilst I'm in the middle of a 24-hour challenge despite already having 15 tours, mostly on two cities, during which this otherwise somehow hasn't happened. Tide goes in, tide goes out. I can't explain that. But as all things should be, this positive turn of events was unfortunately balanced out by some negative. The achievement to kill five uber-ready medics in a single wave was looking like it might be another bugged one. By counting the pink bonus points from dropping Ubers, I could be certain that I'd actually done these requirements over and over again. So I was starting to worry that maybe my guardian angel's demon brother was determined to get even. But I really didn't want to let this achievement slide. I knew I could do it over and over again, and surely eventually it would work. So I decided to try and work towards the achievement of killing robots who are storming the gate on Manhattan, whilst also attempting this dropping Ubers one, and of course, repeatedly succeeding. So even if this achievement wasn't going to work, at least my time wasn't completely wasted. Fortunately, after what felt like a lifetime, it did work. Both the achievement to drop five Robo Ubers and kill five gate crashing enemies was successfully completed. Now, like the well-trained and trauma-conditioned YouTuber that I am, it's time to reveal the sandwich that I so artfully dangled in front of you at the start of this video. TF2's Hardest Achievement On Steam, you can view a game's achievements ordered by the percent of players who have obtained them, meaning that if you scroll all the way to the bottom of that list, we can see Team Fortress 2's statistically hardest achievement, the one that fewer players in the world have achieved than any other achievement in the entire game, which is... Get 10 wins on pastime. That's right, somehow more people have done the extremely complex and inconvenient Tune Marasmus's multi-dimensional television achievement, which also takes place on pastime, than people who have actually played and won the game mode 10 times. With all the time wasted and all the time spent in queues, we only had a little over five hours remaining, and all the low-hanging fruit was well and truly picked at this point. So I knew I only stood a chance of getting one or two more achievements in this time. And let's face it, it's not like I was about to find a match on Doomsday. So if we're only aiming for one more achievement, let's make it the one. The hardest one in the game. Let's get 10 wins on pastime. At around 15 minutes around, I figured I could probably play 20 or so matches in the time remaining. Meaning it should be super easy barely an inconvenience to get the remaining eight wins that I needed, in addition to the two wins I had already got from playing pastime earlier in this challenge. That's right, before today I had zero wins in this game mode, just like it would seem a huge portion of the rest of the TF2 community. But 
we had a problem. And his name was Hank. Hank was a pastime god. He could catch the ball out of the spawn tube, trimp trick and triple jump his way across the map and score it within practically 10 seconds. And he would do that on cooldown. This was great, of course, if he was ever on our team. But like the zero on a roulette wheel, more often than not, he would be our opponent. The hardest achievement in all of TF2 just got harder. But we shall go on to the end. We shall fight in Brickyard. We shall fight on the roofs and terraces. We shall fight with growing confidence and growing strength in the air. We shall defend our water tower, whatever the cost may be. We shall fight on the- And Hank just scored the final winning goal whilst I was dead. We did it. We actually did it, and not a moment too soon. We got TF2's hardest achievement with just 20 minutes left on this challenge. On top of a cheeky medic achievement, I saw the opportunity to tackle whilst passing the time, all of the MVM and other achievements that we got earlier, and, of course, the hardest achievement in the entire game, brought our grand total at the end of this challenge to 17 achievements in just 24 hours. And again, I stress, these are all achievements that have eluded me in 4,000 hours over 14 years of playing. And I haven't earned an achievement in a long, long time by playing normally. And we just got 17 in a single day. Wow. Getting the rarest achievement in all of Team Fortress was a pretty epic high to end on. So rather than spend the last few minutes frantically scrambling for a specific achievement I almost definitely wasn't going to get, I decided to call it there. So I kicked back and queued up one last time just to generally play some Team Fortress 2 and chill out celebrate how far we'd come. Oh, you cannot be serious.